Hey there, good morning, good evening, good afternoon. My name is D. Rose. I'm a photographer here in San Antonio, Texas. The video that you're watching is an actual representation of a actual user of the 18 millimeter F1.4, the F2, and the X70. This is not an exaggeration in any way. Every opinion is mine. There's a few things that I wanna get out of the way before we continue with this video so you can know this is a completely unbiased video and a video that is completely based on real life use and not on a spec sheet or on a limited view of usage with this uh, with this lens. The first thing I want to get out of the way is Fujifilm US does send me gear for review. That is a thing that they do. I use it on paid shoots. I use it on um, you know TFPs. I use it you know for family work. They do send me gear. One thing to note about this test though is that all the gear used was purchased and is continued to be purchased by me. So Fujifilm US had nothing to do with this. And by the way, they never have any barring on any of my decisions or choices. The second thing is, yes, the quietest lens is the 18 millimeter 1.4, but for the hundredth and final time, because you guys are gonna ask it in the comments, so I'm putting it at the front. Lens chatter does not matter. Yes, the 18 millimeter F2 and the X70 with the 18 and a half, uh, 2.8, they, it does have lens chatter, but no, it does not matter because anyone recording an actual professional video and it's not a vlogger, nine times out of 10 is going to use external audio and they're going to make sure they're not recording on the internal mics. Secondly, no one can hear any of these cameras, any of these lenses when you're using them for street photography and no one cares when you're at portrait events using them and you can hear that noise. If you're at a wedding, no one's gonna hear the chimping over the stuff that's actually going on. Your shutter's gonna make three times the noise. Let's stop asking how they sound and if they're useful for video. All these lenses are useful for video and we'll get into that a little bit later. So the first subject I wanna actually touch on is the case of speed, focus speed, focus, um, acquisition, et cetera, et cetera. When it comes to all these lenses, it's it's a no brainer that the fastest lens is a 1.4 uh, versus the F2 or the X70 lens on the X70 body. No brainer, we're not gonna make anything up with that 100%, but in daylight, um, they, all fat, they all focus very, very similar. Subject acquisition is very snappy with any of them between the F2 and the uh, 1.4 more specifically. It is a very, very fluid response to any time you're half pressing that shutter button or full pressing or back focusing. One thing to remember is the algorithm matters just as much and the new sensor and new processor matter just as much as the actual lens. Where the biggest gap is between the F2 and the X70 because even though there's firmware updates on the X70, um, that is a lens that is housed in the body itself, a single body 100% of the time. Fujifilm X70 um, has the 18.5 2.8. It's fantastic, it makes it small, but at the same time, because it doesn't have the new processors as an X-T3, an X-T4, an X-E4, an X-S10, it cannot um, handle the exact same focus speeds as these other lenses. That's one of the benefits of having the F2 and the 1.4 is you can put them on newer bodies and they will continue to progress in the focus speed and the focus acquisition and the accuracy as these lenses get older because the bodies get newer and the processors get better. So the next thing is lens IQ and everyone's gonna ask about this and let me just put this out there. The F1.4 is going to have the best lens IQ, period. There, there does not need to be a huge conversation about this. Yes, it does have the best lens IQ. Part of the fact is because it has a newer formula and also it resolves, it will, it will resolve the full 40 megapixels of the new X-H2 and every other Fujifilm backside illuminated stack sensor from there on. Because of that, you're reaping some of the benefits whenever you're taking these photos. You have a lot more micro contrast, uh, you have a lot more punchier blacks, you have, um, it doesn't really show so much in the color, I would say, because that is something that is subjective. Um, the 18F2 has a warmer look to it versus the 18 1.4, which has a cooler look. Um, and so, 18 1.4 will give you a lot of benefits whenever it comes to taking these photos and it comes to lens IQ. But when all three lenses, the 18 1.4, the F2 and the X70 are stopped down, there is not a whole bunch of a difference. And I want you guys to understand this. This is a lens, a 28 millimeter effective focal length that um, in, my, in my personal usage ha is not created to really be shot at the 1.4 that often. It, it, it's, it, it's going, I mean, if you're shooting at 1.4 and you're shooting street, which I've seen some people do, it's not gonna make sense. And your images aren't gonna look that great whenever you blow them up. And listen, if the whole point of these 
images is to pixel peep or to uh, print them out for a lot of people. Why in the world would you shoot at 1.4 and have one thing in, in focus? And yeah, it looks good when it's this small on your screen for Instagram, but at the same way, whenever you're actually printing this or giving this to a client, a lot of things are gonna be out of focus whenever you start to look into that for street photography. When it comes to documentary photography, I can see you doing environmental portraits with this, but at the same time, if the portrait is an environmental portrait, wouldn't you want more of the environment in focus? Where this lens really shines the 1.4 and where it kind of, maybe shortens the gap between the F2 and the X70 between it is whenever it's anywhere from F4 all the way to F11. Now I did not shoot this against the wall to test for diffraction. This is just me to where whenever it comes to shooting in all ranges at all apertures F, or, or all ranges at all ISOs, the F4 to F11 is the best for all of these lenses. And whenever you're around 5.6 to F11, there is not a huge gap, if any gap, between the F2 and the F1.4. Um, reason being, again, is because you're starting to get sharpness throughout the image and the F2 it by no means is a soft lens at all. That's, that's one common misconception is people have heard the F2 lens without owning this lens, by the way. They've never owned the F2 lens. They've heard it's dull, it's not fast, it's et cetera, et cetera. All the buzzwords that YouTubers give you, um, you know, maybe people that haven't even used the lens, but they tell you that F2 lenses or these kind of lenses or lenses made in, in this time at this year, um, they're not gonna be fast, they're not gonna be sharp. Oh, you gotta get new lenses. Professional lenses are below F1.8, etc., etc. That's not the case. You guys have to shake that off. Listen, objectively speaking, if I was to show you an image between an F2 and an F1.4 shot on these current Fujifilm cameras, which are no higher than 26 megapixel, you would not know the difference if I'm shooting between F4 and F11, period. It's between F1 to F3.6, F1.4 to F3.6, where you're gonna be able to tell that something is an actual F1.4 um, image. And the reason being is going just to be the fact that it can go number one to F1.4 and, and number two from F2 to F, 3.6, the F2 version of the 18 millimeter is not at its sharpest. And whenever you're pixel peeping, you'd be able to tell that in slightly in the corners. But overall, they're all amazing cameras. The X70 is the one that actually is the sleeper in this category because trust me, a lot of people would think it's a little tiny point and shoot camera. It is not only the funnest camera, but it is also a damn sharp lens, even at 2.8. Some of these images that I was able to take, the detail that I'm able to get into it, the fact that it looks like it's sharpened in post whenever I sharpened. I mean, it is amazing what you can do straight out of camera with this lens. It is fantastic. Um, the X70 is literally, if you wanted one camera to just, uh, you know, to be pocketable and things like that, or, or just to be a travel camera, I would skip the, um, you know, any of anything besides the X100V. So it's, if it's between the X100F and below and the X70, even the XF10, I would go with the X70 just because the build, but also that lens is so damn good. It's ridiculously sharp at F2.8 and anything stopped down below that, you're getting nothing but tack sharpness throughout the image. So usability is the next thing I'm gonna talk about. When I talk about usability, I'm talking about, you know, the ability to use it in multiple areas, you know. Um, not only just at a shoot, or not only when just walking around alone, but you're not gonna be able to pull an 18 millimeter 1.4 out of your jacket pocket or out of a pants pocket, and you're not and you're and you're not gonna be able to pull it out so smoothly compared to the 18F2 and the X70 due to its actual size, especially if you're using one of the lens hoods. It's something that's going to be very noticeable, number one, when you're taking it out, and number two, it's something that you know, because it's got that longer lens, could get snagged on a uh, not snagged as in it's a bad thing, but it, it could get snagged on something or it could just bump into something, um, you know, and it makes the draw a little bit slower. At the same time though, because it is weather sealed, when you're paying, when you're pairing that with a weather resistant body, since it's a weather resistant lens, you're you're able to use it in different elements that with the 18.2 and with the X70, you're not able to use. So it has some minor drawbacks when it comes to something like I would consider for street photography, even though I think it's just fine, but it does have some minor drawbacks if you're of the school, if you have to be super, uh, uh, super, um, you know, ninja-like on the street and you gotta wear all black and you gotta wear a black mask and you can't talk to anyone and you gotta have walkie-talkies to talk to your ninja street photography friends and you have to have a GoPro on top, which is very inconspicuous, or a GoPro on your chest to be a ninja, which is very inconspicuous. And the whole ninja street photography YouTube sphere that was started in God knows when. If you're of that regard, you may not like the 18mm 
Gladiator 1.4. Now, what wins the portability section of this, of course, is the X70. It's a small camera, it's very pocketable, it's amazing in the IQ. Um, people look at you like a Taurus when you have it out. I mean, it is the most unintimidating camera, period, from Fujifilm, save for maybe the XF10. It looks like a point and shoot that you can buy for $100 at Walmart. Um, the flip up screen is amazing because you're able to shoot waist level um, using that back of the screen. It does not have a viewfinder, but it doesn't matter because for what you're shooting, it's fantastic for shooting at the hip. The touch screen is fast. As soon as you touch it, focuses and shoots. If you're able to figure out how to zone focus, um, it is even better. And even more than that, um, it has that nice flip up screen. And a lot of you will say, oh, I don't need to take selfies. Trust me. It is a very, very fantastic thing to have, especially if you're married, engaged in a relationship, whatever, to he, she, whoever. It is gonna be a fantastic thing that you can have. And again, it kind of makes it feel like it's, you know, just a toy. Um, even whenever shooting in front of a group of people, if you have it and you're shooting at a subject wide in front of everyone, you have this little tiny camera, instead of people looking at you, they're gonna look behind them to see exactly what you're taking a photo of because you have this cute little toy app. The X70 is a fantastic camera. It is pocketable. It is something that can fit in a coat. You can take it anywhere. It is the most portable camera out of, uh, or most portable way to carry a lens out of these three. It's a damn good lens. But the X, uh, the F2 is no slouch. And that's the thing I want to get to is not only does it pair really great IQ with a pretty fast aperture at F2, and a lot of people love the X100 line. Well, we have the exact same F2 aperture in this 18 millimeter F2 right here. But the thing is, it is small enough and it's a pancake to where you can actually put it on some small bodies and be able to pocket it as well, whether it's the X-T30, X-T20, the X-E line of cameras, um, the X1, X-T, X100T line or X200T line of cameras. This is a camera that is, or X-T100, X-T200. This is a camera that can actually um, do more for you than you would expect it to be just because of the size. Not only that, it has a fantastically cool lens hood. When you're using this without a battery grip on a body, um, it just, it looks small. It looks very, you know, kind of unintimidating in the same way the X70 does. Maybe not so as much, but if anything, it looks like someone's having just a nice, um, cheap little toy camera that they're shooting with as well. That's one of the benefits to it. The aperture ring is always very, very nice. The focus, focusing ring is okay if you want to try manual focus. Um, but again, it, it fills that niche that Fujifilm has failed to get back into, which is these pancake lenses. If you have the 27 2.8 and you have this um, 20 or 18 millimeter F2, and that's the only two lenses that you had for shooting street, you would do very, very well for yourself, especially because of small, low profile. Those are two lenses that I think if you were, if you just want to shoot only street and you want to pair a couple up um, and you don't worry about weather or water or anything like that or dust and you don't have to or you don't shoot that often in those kind of situations, I'm just telling you right now, um, instead of the Fujicron Trio, the 18 F2 and the 27 2.8, the WR or the regular version are probably your two best bets for keeping a light, small load um, and one that packs a punch. So when it comes to low light capability, I'm not gonna stick on this much because it's obvious. The F1.4 has the wider aperture. That's gonna win the low light competition. But for those of you that know how to shoot in uh, low light and you don't use no light, and you know how to use artificial light, you know for a fact the F2 and the, uh, and the two, uh, 18 millimeter and a half F2.8 on the X70 and the 1.4 are gonna all work just fine because you know how to manipulate light. There's no reason to stick on this. Yes, we know which does better in low light, but listen, your sensor and your processor matter just as much as your aperture um, on your lenses when it comes to this. So this right here, we'll give it to the 1.4, but technically it's a wash just because if you're shooting in low light, you should already know how to do the damn thing. And when it comes to the bang for your buck, the winner of this section, hands down, is the 18 millimeter F2. Listen, I've seen this thing go from anywhere between $230 to $380 on Facebook Marketplace or on Fred Miranda, AKA Lin-Manuel Miranda, and then also on Reddit. These things go for cheap. A lot of times people will pair this with like an X-Pro1 um, and have this and the lens for about $450 or $500 just to sell. This is a still of a lens. It is a fast lens at F2. The only thing that curses this lens is you have people who have never used it or people like Ken Wheeler, who after seeing the way that he shot people with a GFX um, 100S and how bad those images came out, probably shouldn't be 
comparing images or giving any insight on images until they learn how to use them correctly. This is a fantastic lens. This is a still of a lens. I get it, it's not weather resistant. For those of you guys who live in the middle of Nebraska or live in the middle of Arizona, I get it. You have to worry every single day about monsoons and snow. And so you need that extra, um, you know, safety from the weather elements because there might be a mudslide sometime next week. But I digress. Um, the 18 millimeter F2 is the best bang for your buck in this hands down period. It's got an F2 aperture. It's, it's, it's super duper quick. Um, it's got that amazing um, IQ that, that, that comes with this lens. There's nothing I can say about it. It's a pancake lens, which means it's more versatile and where you can take it and use it. Th that is by far, hands down, the best bang for your buck. The, the second on this list would be the X70. Now, the biggest thing is because it comes with its own body. Um, the 18 and a half 2.8 on the X70 comes with its own body. You're able to use it. It's got a lot of fantastic things that are going for it because of that. You're able to carry just one tiny little camera in your pocket, move around with it. The only thing about it is it, it does not perform in the same way as the other two lenses will on a newer body. And the older the X70 gets, the more noticeable it's gonna be when paired up with other Fujifilm cameras of how slow the speed actually is. It's not the fault of the lens, but it's a fault of the processor and the algorithm. There's only so many updates that can be given to that processor that it can handle. And so the snappiness and the speed of that lens um, on that uh, in that camera body will only be able to reach a certain height. And then you're going to start noticing um, very quickly the difference in IQ, the difference in quality of, of, of speed between that and these other lenses when paired with newer Fujifilm bodies. And of course, the 18mm 1.4 is last in this list. It's a thousand dollar lens. I'm going to tell you off the bat, do not make the same mistake that I made and purchase this lens brand new. It is not a $1,000 lens whatsoever. You'll be very disappointed. Now listen, whenever it comes to being used on the X-H2 and all the new sensors from Fujifilm and it's able to resolve off 40 megapixels, yeah, you'll probably be thankful for it, you know, because you're able to do more and print more. But if, if you're not printing and you're not shooting weddings, um, even if you are shooting weddings, the 18F2 is not gonna miss shots. Let me just put that out there. The 18 1.4 just has that 1.4 aperture. And if you're someone, unless you're shooting weddings at night and you need a whole bunch of sparkler photos, um, I, I just want you to know, I, I can't imagine you always shooting at 1.4 with this. Um, this should have been a $7 lens, at, uh, $700 or $800 lens at launch. I probably would have preferred uh, $800 um, just for how good it is. Um, this is not a $1,000 lens. The price of this lens, shout out to my mentor, Flossie Carter, is too goddamn high. Um, this is not, I mean, it's got weather resistance and a 1.4 aperture, but no one asked for this from this lens. No one. A lot of people were wanting the 18 F2 to get weather resistance and be refreshed the same way the 27 2.8 was refreshed. But for this lens, the 18 F 1.4, it's not something that a lot of people asked for. I used all three of these lenses on paid shoot and personal time um, combined. And, and the one thing I can tell you is they're all three fantastic. They're all three amazing. But because the 18 1.4 does not jump out as more amazing than the 18 F2, I, I can't say it's a thousand dollars and I can't recommend this lens. I really, really can't. Um, I sold my copy. I a hundred percent can't say that the, that it is better than the 18 F2 by more than $300. I can't. And that's considering that as a linear motor, it has weather resistance, but past that, um, I can't see it as a nine, $1,000, even an $800 lens. Any of the new Fujifilm lenses where the 23 1.4, 33 1.4 and the 18 1.4, uh, they're, they're not really grabbing my attention as, oh, there's a reason why you're paying this price. It, it's, it's not like that. You're paying that price because they're adding the key buzzwords of weather resistance, linear motors, and 40 megapixel, um, you know, uh, the ability to resolve 40 megapixels. They should be pushing that direction anyway because that's what their cameras are doing. So don't think that, oh, you know what, I have to get this. Every lens is gonna be resolved at 40 megapixels sooner or later from Fujifilm. And so just the fact that it's weather resistant and it has linear motors, them thinking that that's um, indicative of a huge price jump, I don't like that. And I really think that's a weak move by Fujifilm. And whenever they see this, it is what it is, but it's a horribly weak move. And if I were you, I would wait. I see the 18 1.4 on the gray market sell from anywhere of last week, sold for $720 all the way to $850. So, um, 
I would hold off on it and I wouldn't purchase it. And the winner of this whole thing and the conclusion that I actually have of the best lens to use between any of these actually is the 18 millimeter F2. It's the best bang for your buck. It's the most pocketable. Um, it's very, very fast still. It's got amazing IQ. Um, and even though it may not be better than the X70 or the 18 1.4 in, in some regards, it is never off by a long shot. It's always just raised within. It's always better, only less than by a hair. Um, but when it comes to the things that it does great, which is the price, which is the portability for an interchangeable lens, um, the other two can't touch it, period. And that's why the 18 millimeter F2 to me is still the best 28 millimeter effective focal length whenever it comes to the Fujifilm system. Now, in the future, meaning once I have time to use this lens, meaning once I use it for more than a month and once I use it on some paid shoots, I'll be comparing it to my new Leica Q, which I barely got in after uh, this and the X-T3 being in the mail for 20 days, um, thanks to USPS and their horrible customer service. So I'll be comparing it to the Leica Q. Um, but one thing to keep in mind whenever I'm doing that is I'm not going to be comparing it when shooting it wide open because I can't imagine using uh, a, you know, a really, really sharp and amazing lens for street wide open. Majority of my shots are going to be at f5.6 to f11, maybe even f4, f1.7 if I have to use it for something special. So please, the Boca Whore community, don't get mad at me because you're going to be really pissed when I make this GFX uh, 100S and the, the lens that came with the video because you're going to be super mad. But that's the conclusion. I hope you enjoyed watching it. The 18mm f2 is my champion when it comes to f2 lenses from Fujifilm. The 1.4 is a fantastic lens if bought used. I think gray market is the best option to go and whenever it comes to the x70 i still think it's one of the best bang for your bucks i would choose it over anything but an x100v when it comes to um uh, fixed lens uh, system from fujifilm but at the same time i know that my needs are a little bit different than a lot of people out there so do whatever you want i think 28 millimeter is more versatile than 35 so it's my own personal opinion uh, if you have any opinions or any questions or anything like that you can go ahead and ask me down below in the comments Find me on Instagram, give me some questions there. If you'd like to see more sample images than the ones that were shown here, you can go ahead and ask for that. And if you'd like for any raws, sure, maybe, I don't really know. But that's it for the video, hope you enjoyed. Have a good one.